Jesus, the bread of life, and the word of life. And we have the picture of Elijah, the fiery prophet of God, going through an experience of depression, despair, and disillusionment. And God feeds him, or oh, the God gives him two heavenly meals, and let him have a siesta in between. We'll go back to Elijah for our practical life application in a few moments. Jesus, the bread from heaven. Every time we hear those words, the bread from heaven, in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, we instinctively think of Holy Eucharist. But don't be quick. Don't be so quick to jump to Holy Eucharist when you hear this gospel. Something else has to happen before receiving the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Something very essential has to happen before you and me come to receive the Holy Communion. You may have missed those words. There were some very important words before the Lord spoke about himself as the bread from heaven. The Lord said, come to me, come to me. I will teach you. I will teach you. You and me, we need some teaching, some understanding and preparation before we Come to the table of the bread of life. In other words, receive the word of Jesus before we receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament. The word of God first, then the bread of God. Unless you receive the word of God first, you are never going to experience the bread of God. In, if I put it in a different way, the Lord is inviting you and me to feed on his presence. To feed on his life-giving word. First of all, enjoy the word of God and feed on his presence and love. Then you will have a communion. Without the first, the second would not happen. The second would be just a routine that happens in every mass. I'll explain it with uh, some imageries from the Bible. Do you remember the way we read about the relationship between Adam and Eve? Bible is fantastic. In, for the brevity of language and the depth of its meaning, we are told Adam knew Eve. What a beautiful expression about a couple's relationship. Adam knew Eve. Adam knew Eve. What is the implication? You know what the meaning is. 
about their relationship and union but the word no new it means a lot of emotional emotional and spiritual and intellectual intimacy we said again intellectual emotional and spiritual intimacy before physical union adam knew eve and eve knew adam they were one spiritually emotionally and physically they were one without the spiritual emotional and intellectual intimacy body has no place body has no place unless the intellectual emotional and spiritual intimacy happens body has no place so intimacy spiritually intellectually that precedes physical relationship or union as why well adam knew eve and eve knew adam they were one now with the application my dear friends in every mass to unless we have the intellectual spiritual and emotional intimacy with the god receiving communion whether it is on the hand or on the tongue doesn't have any significance we may have a communion every mass every day unless you and me have an intellectual and emotional and spiritual intimacy this act of receiving the lord has no impact on your life or my life first of all let the lord feed you your mind and heart with this word do tron me 83 man does not live on bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god so feed on the word of god to make it clearer i would put this way the word of god and the bread of life and the communion they are the same it may disturb you for a moment i am putting these all together the word of god the word of life and the bread of life they are together you should have it together don't separate it both are equally 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 important the reason i explained first of all intellectual spiritual intimacy through the word of god may put this way unless you know somebody how can you have any friendship or relationship with that with him or with her knowing the person is the essential condition for a deeper relationship the word of god is the only way the only way you and me understand the mind of god and the heart of god and if you are not tuned to the word of god you have no interest in the word of god in the scripture or word of god how can you have a communion with him unless you know the god through the word of god how will you have any kind of relationship with him what i am saying is the holy scripture the reading the readings in the mass and the reflection on the mass doesn't matter who is giving the reflection everything is all those things are very important so tune your heart tune your ears to the word of god every time you listen to the word of god because this is where I know the mind of God the heart of God I will grow I will grow in intellectual spiritual and emotional maturity and relationship with the God Let us go further 
just for understanding this word can be a bit confused the lord says eat my flesh that word flesh in english has got a bit of a disturbing connotation flesh like meat are we cannibals no the word flesh in the bible means the whole person could that could to understand the, the biblical understand what does the word of flesh mean the word of flesh means the whole person john says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh a human person so when you hear the word flesh the lord is telling you eat my flesh means receive me the whole of me here the flesh means the life the death the entire message whatever the lord did whatever he said everything about jesus so not just about that piece of bread the holy eucharist no no it's more than that it's more that it's all about the whole person of jesus so listen to his word listen to his word receive him listen to his word receive him then you come up the aisle to receive him the whole person of jesus so don't be too focused on that little piece of bread that's only a reminder the very person of jesus in that bread just to remind you but the similar in the same way when you listen to the word of god the lord is speaking to me he is feeding my mind telling me what to do telling me what not to do he is feeding my heart and my soul now let us go to the practical application in the first reading very significant Elijah is a mighty prophet of God a fiery prophet of God full of passion and power one day he had a great victory or all the four prophets of Baal great day wonderful experience he was so thrilled because he could see the power of God in action in wonderful display and everybody was impressed he was delighted he could see the power of god in action that is a story one day but next day elijah goes into depression despair and disillusionment the god of power disappeared the next day this will make sense to us or oh, this should make to all of us make sense to all of us one day all going well one day all going well your prayer was answered you are full of joy enthusiasm you like coming to mass everything going so well but next day all hell breaks loose everything going the wrong way no prayer being answered you are going into a kind of disillusionment and a kind of despair where is god here is elijah full of fear the next day and fleeing for his life from the threat of Jezreel Jezebel and there he is there he is completely discouraged disheartened demoralized he couldn't see any purpose in life all life has gone out of him all joy has gone out of him this could be our experience to at some point in life if you live long enough you will find this kind of experience one day life takes a turn and you find you wonder where is my god gone where is my joy gone where is my meaning and purpose all gone the light has gone out of your life you feel 
discouraged. You feel, I can't take it anymore. What is the point of living this miserable life? Don't condemn those who take their life. Don't condemn. You don't know what challenge or struggle they go through. Don't condemn anybody who take their life. Like Elijah, you and me could have the same experience. Either because of a depression, when you have a chemical imbalance, out of your control. Oh, life has hit you so hard. Some illness or terminal illness. Maybe an emotional pain. Something or the other can take the stuff out of your life. All gone. But there is the message from Elijah. Heaven comes down. The Lord does in the cure his depression. The Lord only feeds him intellectually and spiritually. Eat this. Eat this. He had the food from heaven and he goes to sleep again. Again, come on, wake up, wake up. Eat more. Listen more. Study more. Receive the Lord more. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. This is bound to happen. This was bound to happen. This is the way life is. Why are you surprised? The message for you and me, my dear friends, is never give up any moment in your life, whatever happens. Whichever way life goes, maybe everything is going so well today, okay, give thanks to God. But if tomorrow, if everything goes wrong way, don't run away from God. The God will come down to you to feed you. All you have to do is keep your ears open. Keep your heart open. Then you will find him feeding you, feeding you with his love, with his mercy, and with his word. The word of life and the bread of life.